Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Remember to like and subscribe for a better relationship with your boss next time you play. Maybe. Today we're building Kazuma Kiru from the Yakuza series for a very special fan, but also because we finally have a worldwide release date for Yakuza 0, Like a Dragon. Unless you're the special fan that's getting this early, then uh, well, I hope this ties you over until then. Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, we need to punch, kick, throw, and put all of that together to fight like the Dragon of Dojima. Next, we'll make sure that we've got heat, ways to put some extra oomph behind your hits and deal with whole crowds of baddies with nothing but your fists. Finally, we'll make sure that the world is our weapon, letting us beat people up with anything we can get our hands on. For stats, we're using the standard point array from the player's handbook. Roll for stats if you want, but dexterity and wisdom have to be high. Strength will actually be first though. The improvised weapons will be using this modifier. Remember, improvisation is all about saying yes and, as in yes, I'll punch you, and I'll throw a bicycle on top of you, and I'll jump on it. Dexterity will be next, you're as nimble as a dragon. Wait, a dragon's nimble? No. So I guess you'll be more nimble than a dragon. Nice. Wisdom after that, if you don't keep your head on a swivel, it could end up on the floor, with your body on the floor, next to it, not attached. You'll die, that's what I'm trying to say. Follow that up with Constitution, working for the Yakuza requires a lot of endurance, and fighting against the Yakuza requires even more. Charisma is a little lower than I'd like, but we'll get plenty of proficiencies to make sure that we're able to dance, do karaoke, and talk to people on the phone. We're gonna be dumping intelligence though, Kiru is a real estate mogul, but his advisors do most of the work. He really just walks in front of buildings and pulls out a briefcase full of cash. Probably not the smartest way to invest. Kiru is a human, but what if the dragon of Dojima was actually a dragon? You'd get a buff to your strength and charisma modifiers, be able to hit people with a breath weapon once per short rest, and get resistance to a type of energy damage. But Varian Human is the most accurate, you get a feat, the Tavern Brawler feat adds one to your strength or constitution, I'd go for strength, we'll be punching and crunching. This lets you use improvised weapons with your proficiency bonus, and you can grapple enemies as a bonus action after you make an unarmed attack or an improvised weapon attack as your action. It also lets you use a d4 for your unarmed attack rolls, but we're getting something better later, so it'd be kind of a waste to explain that here. And it'd be even more of a waste of time explaining why I'm explaining it here. Bump your wisdom and dexterity with your two free points, take intimidation for your skill of choice, and modify the criminal background for performance and deception, as stealth isn't really your thing in a flashy Yakuza outfit. We'll kick things off as a fighter now, letting us pick two skills from the fighter list. Acrobatics and athletics are classics for a reason, they're fun to use. This will also give us a fighting style, unarmed fighting from the class feature variants Unearthed Arcana, lets you make unarmed attacks that deal 1d6 bludgeoning damage using your strength modifier, or 1d8 if you have two free hands for a double hand fist chop thing i honestly don't know what it's called you also deal 1d4 damage when you grapple a creature and can add that damage to attacks you make to grappled creatures letting you pummel someone that you're holding still you also get second wind letting you restore hp equal to 1d10 plus your fighter level as a bonus action helping you get back into the fight even after taking a big hit we're gonna bounce over to monk really quick giving us unarmored defense making your ac 10 plus your dexterity and wisdom modifier while you're not wearing armor i'm sure you could get plate armor with a deep V, but why would you? Especially considering that while you're not wearing armor, you can use martial arts, letting you make an unarmed attack as a bonus action after you attack with either a monk weapon or an unarmed attack. Unfortunately, improvised weapons can't be monk weapons unless your DM is super cool, but tell them Tulak would say it was okay, and they'll probably go for it. Maybe. Now that we've got our suit on, we can go back to fighter level 2, where we'll get action surge, letting you make two actions instead of one once per short rest. That gives you three unarmed attacks per round, so even if you're completely surrounded, you'll be okay. Third level fighters can choose a subclass, which is really what we're here for. Battle masters get four superiority die per short rest, but I think they're supposed to be called heat die. You can spend these on maneuvers like trip attack, which lets you force a strength save of eight plus your proficiency bonus and strength modifier on a creature you hit that's large or smaller, making them fall prone if they fail and giving everyone advantage on melee attacks against them until they stand up and you get to add your superiority die to the damage. Curb stopping is kind of mean, but it can rack up damage pretty quickly. Parry lets you guard with your arms, reducing damage damage as a reaction, an amount equal to your superiority die plus your dexterity modifier, which is going to be your best stat eventually, so it can really help you lower incoming damage. Finally, sweeping attack lets you roll your superiority die when you hit a creature that's within 5 feet of another creature that that attack would also land on. You get to deal the superiority die's worth of damage to the second creature. Obviously the trick punches are cool, but we're here for Student of War, which gives us proficiency with a set of artisan's tools, and Kiru needs to cash checks as often as he snaps next. 
So we're grabbing calligraphy. It's so powerful. It'll have the rival gangsters shaking in their boots. Fourth level fighters get an ability score improvement. Bump your strength here first, as we need as many of these as we possibly can get if D&D Kiru is going to be as well-rounded as Yakuza Kiru. Fifth level fighters get an extra attack, letting you make two attacks with your action and still get an extra bonus action attack for a number of blows that some might consider a flurry. Speaking of, second level monks get key points, which can be a lesser use of your heat. You can use these to make a flurry of blows to make two unarmed attacks as a bonus action instead of one, letting you really wail on someone who bothers you on the street. It's really their fault. Don't feel too bad. If you need to dodge, patient defense will let you do it quickly, as a bonus action more specifically, giving you advantage on dexterity saves and your enemies disadvantage to hit you. Finally, you can use Step of the Wind to dash or disengage as a bonus action and double your jump distance for the turn as well. Giru doesn't really jump in the games, but he can run real fast. Not as fast as some other Sega characters, but fast. But if you really want to go fast, make sure you're wearing a nice suit and nothing else for unarmored movement, which will give you a speed boost while you're not wearing armor. Third level monks get deflect missiles, letting you reduce the damage of incoming ranged attacks by 1d10 plus your dexterity modifier and monk level. If you drop it to zero, you can spend the key point to throw the ammo back as a monk weapon. I wasn't able to catch any bullets while I was playing the game, but I'm also not very good at it, so maybe other people could. You can also pick a monastic tradition, Way of the Open Hand, lets you add some extra heat to your flurry of blows, forcing a dexterity save of eight plus your proficiency bonus and wisdom modifier to knock an enemy prone, a strength saving throw to push them up to 15 feet away, or if you don't want to use your wisdom modifier saving throw, you can just stop them from taking reactions until the end of your next turn. No save required. And that'll be it for monk levels. I'll explain why later, but for now, let's go to fighter level 6 for an ability score improvement, letting us cap off our strength modifier for the best grapples, punches, and bicycle kicks, which I'm told isn't when you kick someone you've hit with a bicycle, but that sounds fake and wrong. 7th level battle masters get to know their enemy with a minute of study, letting you know whether they have higher, lower, or equal amounts of strength, dexterity, constitution, AC, hit points, total levels, or fighter levels. You get to pick two of these so you can figure out if a guy is going to shake you down or if you're going to shake them down. Wait, is Keter the Mr. Shakedown for everyone else? There's always a bigger fish. You also get another superiority die you can spend on two maneuvers. Menacing attack forces a wisdom saving throw on creatures you hit. Failing that, they're frightened until the end of your next turn, giving them disadvantage on attack rolls and ability checks while you're within their line of sight. Disarming attack forces a strength save on a creature you attack, forcing them to drop an object of your choice. Maybe you pick it up and use it against them. Your proficiency with simple, martial, and improvised weapons should make you able to do that. You also get to add your superiority die to the damage of either of those attacks as well, making your enemies feel the heat. 8th level fighters get an ability score improvement. More dexterity will increase your AC so that you can stay well-dressed and unstressed. 9th level fighters get indomitable, letting you reroll a failed saving throw once per long rest, which should help you keep up with all the crap you have to deal with from the locals. 10th level battle masters get improved combat superiority, bumping your heat die up to d10s, which you can use for some new heat actions, or as the player's handbook calls them, maneuvers. Repost lets you hit a creature with a reaction when they miss you with a melee attack, adding the superiority die to the damage. Technically, you can only counter after you take a hit in the game, but there's not a great way to replicate that without 14 levels of barbarian. Kiryu's pissed, but he handles it well. Speaking of things that we can't necessarily replicate, Okay, taunting is fun, and goading attacks kind of let you do that, forcing a wisdom saving throw on a creature you hit. If they fail, they have disadvantage attacking creatures that aren't you until the end of your next turn. The streets of Kamurocho are safer when you're there. Nobody else seems to care about street violence. The police are too busy checking everyone's pockets for some reason. 11th level fighters get another extra attack, letting you attack three times with your action, or four times with your martial arts, or seven times with your action surge and martial arts, or eight times with your action surge and flurry of blows. I personally don't love the rush style, but hey. You do you. 12th level fighters get an ability score improvement. I'll keep pushing for more dexterity so we can make sure that we don't get blood on our fancy suit. You paid good money for it after all. 13th level fighters get another use of indomitable. Resilience is key. Not enough for me to take the resilient feat, but you know. 14th level fighters get another ability score improvement. Cap that dexterity off, then move on to wisdom to help your AC. 15th level battle masters get relentless, giving you a superiority die when you roll initiative and you don't have any. You get another superiority die to use for a total of six per short rest, so please use them. Two more maneuvers again, lunging attack increases the reach of your attack by five feet and lets you add the superiority die to the damage if you want to do a big long drop kick. Pushing attack lets you push a target 15 feet back after they fail a strength save and you get to add your superiority already die to the damage to send an enemy flying. 16th level fighters get our last ability score improvement. If you want to get hit less, invest in wisdom. If you're okay getting hit, grab the tough feet, which will give you 2 HP for every level you have and every level you get, making you a very thick boy. Our capstone is the 17th level of fighter for a third use of indomitable and a second use of action surge for when you really need to rip through a whole horde of gangsters, drunks, ruffians, or who 
hooligans. But if Kiru is a boy who punch thing real good, why didn't we focus on monk levels, as that whole class is punch thing real good? Well, there's a couple of reasons. Number one, abilities that Kiru doesn't really do. Kiru's punches aren't magical, so key empowered strikes doesn't make sense. Kamurocho isn't full of sorcerers casting fireballs, so evasion isn't really a thing. He can't run up walls or walk on water. He presumably could be poisoned, so purity of body is out, and he can't speak every language. Yakuza Zero doesn't even have English voice acting, and he can't turn invisible to reduce damage, so empty body is out. Reason number two, ability scores. Improvised weapons aren't the best to use, and they're even worse if your strength modifier isn't high. Grappling requires high strength as well. If we're going to invest in strength, but don't want to wear heavy armor, we'll need a lot of ability score improvements to our stats to make sure that our dexterity and strength are both high. Finally, if I'm trying to replicate heat, superiority die feel more in line than key points. Two extra attacks with the martial arts bonus attack will consistently give us four attacks per round without consumable key points attachments like flurry of blows, and the superiority die bonus damage is more substantial and runs out more quickly, like the heat in the game. Anyway, now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how viable this build is. First, attacks. You've got a lot of them, between four and eight per round with a capped modifier for each hit, meaning that you can really send out the damage. For a damage breakdown, that could mean 8d8 plus 6d10 plus 40 bludgeoning damage in a single round. Those 6d10 coming from your maneuvers, which let your hits do a little bit more, helping you knock weapons out of enemy hands or trip them up for some vicious curb stomping. Finally, you're great at controlling enemy position with high athletic skill to push people around, pushing attack, or your flurry of blows to get people away from you. For weaknesses, 6 superiority die per short rest might seem like a lot, but considering you can make 8 attacks in one round, you could run out of them before round 2. Improvised weapons also put a damper on this build as it forces us to invest in our strength and our dexterity, which stops us from investing in wisdom or grabbing more useful feats. Hopefully your DM lets you do cool stuff with improvised weapons, otherwise maybe just focus on real ones. Finally, this whole thing could have been a little bit better defensively if we just focused on fighter and you weren't concerned with doing everything in a fancy suit. You've got the strength for plate armor and a shield and could have hit 20th level of fighter for a final extra attack, another ability score improvement for more constitution and more HP. But looking good is important if you're gonna be a gangster, dress to impress and beat down anyone who doesn't respect the depth of your V. Just make sure you're investing those superiority die efficiently. Things could get bad when those hit zero. Thanks for watching and special thanks to the Angel Aguila for commissioning this video. I had a lot of fun playing this game and might just have to do a Majima build someday now that these characters are in my repertoire. Everyone else, subscribe if you want to see more. We do two builds every week.